Hello, just Jamie here. So uh, firstly, if you've not yet liked and subscribed, like and subscribe and be sure to hit notifications so you don't miss out my awesome new videos covering emulation and retro games. And if you're into it, I'll also cover music. I'll play a bit of guitar. Uh, also opened up a Patreon, so uh, be sure to check that out. Link is in the description. So today's tutorial is going to be covering RetroArch. Uh, the reason being is that RetroWatch is a really complex program and a lot of the time I hear people uh, saying on social media how do you do this, how do you do that, how do you do this so I thought it was about time I made my own tutorial on how to use RetroWatch in the easiest possible way to load your games so first things first we're going to head over to the RetroWatch website link is in the description and we're going to download RetroWatch uh, the one I suggest you download is the stable and as recording this video, uh, current stable version is 1.15.0. Every now and again, the developers update this with new cores, and I'm going to explain what cores are in a second. So I've already downloaded this, and I'm going to open it up, and it downloads as an XE folder. And just so you're aware, I'm using Windows 11 for this tutorial, um, although this will work on other versions of Windows 2 and definitely Windows 10. So let's just go for the installation process. So just press next, agree with the terms and conditions. Uh, next job you got is the destination folder. So by default, it's going to default to your C drive. And that's what I'm gonna use. If you've got an alternative drive, you want to install this RetroArch system to just go to browse and select your drive or wherever you want to install it to. So yes, C drive for me, next. And if you don't have DirectX, then you need to select this to download this too. I have uh, many versions of DirectX at this point, up to 12, so I don't need to bother with that. So next, and install. So what is RetroArch then while this is installing? Uh, RetroArch is kind of like a user interface to access your retro games uh, to make it a bit more accessible. However, like I said, a lot of people out there who's new to this is uh, struggling getting games working. Uh, as there are so many options in RetroArch, it can look very daunting from time to time. It's like, what am I doing? So the point of this video then is to make this as easy as possible and just show you the very basics of getting the best from RetroArch and your retro game collection. Okie doke, so once it's finished, obviously we just press finish. Uh, we can delete the installation, the setup file now, the exe. So just drag and drop that to the recycle bin. And we're gonna just double left click on the RetroArch shortcut. Okay, so first things first, uh, a lot of people on their tutorials will go ahead and go directly into setting up a new user interface and it gets really confusing so I'm going to just leave the user interface as standards now how it opens up. The first thing I'm going to show you is if we go to settings we need to go to video first and we need to go to full screen mode and I'm using a PlayStation controller for this although cursor keys will do the same thing and the first thing I'm going to select is start in full screen mode. And there we have it, so we have our full screen mode. Now to begin with, you will need to determine which systems you have games for. So in my example, in my tutorial, I've got NES game and I've got a Mega Drive game or a Genesis game if you're in America. So we need to go to Online Updater. And if we go to Core Downloader, and just give you a brief example what cores are, which a lot of people seem confused about, is cores are essentially like emulators. They're the brains behind the games. They make your games work. Without cores, your games will fail to load. So like I said, I've got a Nintendo NES and a Mega Drive or Genesis game. So we need to scroll down and find the cores for both of these. And as you can see, there's a lot of cores on here. It's RetroArch supports a heck of a lot of systems. So first thing I'm gonna do is download a core for NES or Famicom, depending where in the world you are. So I'm going to just go for uh, Meson. And each 
system has several different cores. As you can see, NES alone has FCEU, double M, and Meson, and Nestopia, um, and QuickNest. So I'm gonna just download that one like I've just done. So next up, I'm gonna need to find a core for the Mega Drive or the Genesis. So if I scroll down further, And we got several different options here for Mega Drive. As you can see, we got Blastem, we got Plus GX. I'm gonna go for the Genesis Plus GX. As you can see, it runs Master System, Game Gear, Mega Drive, and CD, which is Mega CD or Sega CD. So you press X on this to download and install the core, which of course goes into your directory where your installation have just installed to. And back out of this. So that's our core is done, and that's our full create screen set it up. So the next thing we need to do is find and locate our games. So I'm gonna just scroll down to import content, and I'm gonna direct RetroArch to where my games are on my computer. So if I just go to scan directory, and my games are on my C drive, and they're on my desktop. So if I just go to C drive, and if I scroll down to users, and if I go to Jamie, and then hit desktop, and scan this directory, and this should then pick up my Mega Drive and my Nintendo NES game. So if we back back out of this by pressing circle, We now have at the bottom here, icon for Nintendo NES and an icon for Mega Drive. And it's as simple as that. So lots of X's to press, lots of circles to press, but once you get to grips with these, it's pretty simple. So let's just check out this Nintendo NES game, which is Nightmare on Elm Street. So if I just press right to go over to Nightmare on Elm Street, press X. And if I press X on run, and you will now see the core I've just downloaded, which is of course Meson. If I press X on this, and it says core set, so we're all good to go. And of course press X on run. And there we go, we have a fully working Nintendo NES game running using RetroArch. Okay. So if you want to exit your games using RetroArch, in my case I'm using the PlayStation button. Just press the PlayStation button and just use D-pad to go to close content and press X. That will take us back to this screen. So let's just check out the Mega Drive game and see if this one's working. So if I just go down once again to Mega Drive. Free Ninjas kick back and press X on that. And I'm going to run this and also select the core I've just downloaded, which is Genesis plus GX. Press X and it's set again. Just press run. And we now have Mega Drive or Genesis up and running, which is brilliant stuff. Okay, so once again to exit this game, if I just press my PlayStation button and go to close content. Now another really cool feature with RetroArch, uh, some people might think it's pretty cool, some might not, is you can actually download the artwork to go with these games. So if I just go to the Nightmare on Elm Street again, and if I just go down a little bit further, you'll see download thumbnails. If I press X on this, there we go, we now have artwork for Nightmare on Elm Street. And if I want the artwork for Mega Drive games, I'm going to just do the same process. So scroll over to Free Ninjas, scroll down, and hit Download Thumbnails. And there we have it. So other things you might be interested in with RetroArch is of course you can change the, the look of this program. So to do this, and I'm not going to cover the tutorial on this, but I'm simply going to show you how to do it. So if we just go to Drivers, and firstly select menu, we got a 
option here of four different looks, the appearance of what Retro Watch looks like. So let's say I'm going to do this, but then I'm going to go straight back into the default just for the purposes of this tutorial. So I'm going to go with the most popular, which is XMB, press X, back out of this, go to main menu and restart Retro Arch. And there we have it. So we now have almost a PlayStation aesthetic about this. So I'm going to just close this one down and go back into the original default user interface. So something else uh, some people might think is pretty cool, um, I certainly do, is every now and again RetroArch will upload onto a software uh, homebrew games, so new games for older systems. So to do this, just go to main menu, and if we go to online updater, where we installed our cores, if we just go down to content downloader, and select a system we want to check games out for, I'm going to just scroll down to Nintendo Entertainment System, which is the NES. And we got a selection there of modern homebrew games. So let's just check out Alter Ego. So just scroll down, press X, and back out of this. And if we go to Load Content and Downloads, which is where these are downloading to, if you choose to use RetroWatch's Downloading Games option, just press X on Alter Ego, and there we have it. So obviously to back out this once again, I'll show you, just press the PlayStation button, and we are going to close content. So the features, more in-depth features with RetroArch is the multitude of options you have. Uh, you, you can go from drivers here, like I just showed you, to video drivers, so say a game's not working using the default OpenGL, which is currently selected. We could try running a game on DirectX 12, DirectX 11, DirectX 10, and so on. And if we go to settings and go to video, we've also got lots of different options for how your games look and appear on screen. So if I just go to scaling, we could even change the aspect ratio of the games, how they're going to appear. So if I just go to aspect ratio, right now it says core provided. If I press X on this, and for example, I scroll to nine by 16, select this. And if I come back out, and I'm going to just tell you right now to save your progress uh, with all the work you're doing if you're following this tutorial. So just go to main menu. And if you go to configuration file, scroll down and save new configuration. So I'm going to show you the 16 by 9 I've just changed for my games to open up with. So I'm going to go to Nintendo Entertainment System and run. And I think that's about it for this very basic RetroArch tutorial. So in this tutorial, I've showed you how to download RetroArch. I've showed you how to download cores, which are kind of like your mini emulator equivalents to make your games run. I've also showed you how to download artwork for your games. And I've looked at video options. So if you've got any more questions, just head over to the Patreon, which I set up the other day and check that out and we can talk there. So check out my other emulation videos. I hope you find this one really insightful and I hope you've got your retro games working. So for now, take care.